Good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. In our early years, we concentrate on getting an education. We get degrees. But the problem with degrees is, is that they, though they wear thin, only preparing us for a very small area of life. The danger in later years is the myth that older people cannot learn now. Older people begin to worry about their mental capacity, fearing the loss of their mental ability. We have always assumed that the brain ages as the body does. And just as the body declines, so does the brain. The common medical perception is that the brain begins to shrink after the age of 20 and that by 70 it is 10% smaller and by 80 we can expect dysfunction. So ageing meant mental diminishment as surely as night follows day. And is this true? No. Old brains are indeed smaller, but they are no less mentally competent and in some ways, in terms of reflection and creativity, they are better. We know that anomia, the inability to recall names, is common to anyone over the age of 30. The same is true for jokes and phone numbers. It is as if the human brain decides that, as it ages, it should discard the things that it need not remember, and especially those things that have no personal meaning. But other mental abilities begin to sharpen. We become far more reflective, more analytical, and we begin to notice other dimensions of the world, of people, of events and absorb them into our answers. We bring experience to knowledge and then we add wisdom to our results. But only if we continue to develop, to learn, to cultivate, only then is our mental acuity likely to increase with age. The danger lies in not feeding this growth. The idle mind, the mind left to atrophy, is at risk. With nothing to think about, with no challenges to engage us, with no problems to solve, the question looms, what is left of me and why bother? That kind of depression comes from the emptying of self, and it is sad. It comes from surrender to the unnecessary. We are not useless unless we choose to be. We are not diminished unless we diminish ourselves in heart and mind. We can age passively, or we can age actively. Passive ageing gives way to the creeping paralysis of the soul. This ageing sees getting older as being part of the final throw of a slow death, rather than living differently and dauntlessly. Active ageing cooperates with physical effects of ageing, adjusting to the change of pace. Active ageing requires us to go on living life to the full, no matter how differently. One of the clearest signs of healthy ageing is drawn from the Harvard University longitudinal study of, developing, of development in adults. And that one factor is lifelong learning. Lifelong learning determines our physical and mental health to a large degree. 
The problem with age is not age. It is the rigidity of soul that accompanies age and inflexibility. When we close our minds to the new, we close our minds to our well-being. The question at this stage of our lives is not, should I learn something, but rather, what should I learn? Perhaps a new language, or a new skill, such as woodworking, sewing, or how to use a computer. So the burden of these years is the fear that they bring nothing but increasing incompetence and irrelevance. The blessing of these years is that we now have the time, the time to learn the things we have always wanted to learn. We now have the time to grow, to transform, to become. Let us pray. Father, you have gifted us with a brain which has the capacity to learn, to adapt, to change. Help us to remember that as we age. Help us to rise to the challenge of learning anew of being open to new ways of doing things. And remind us that if we do not learn, if we do not expand ourselves mentally, then we are in fact giving up on this one very precious gift, the ability to learn to come to know more, to change, to transform. Let us hold on to life and all that it offers right up until the end, never consigning ourselves to a place of incompetence and irrelevance. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.